today's video, I'm going to show you how to create an I assembly. So an I assembly can has got many different it's like sort of a configurable uh, assembly that you have in Inventor, uh, very much similar to an I part. So an I part would be a part created where you'd have different configurations of that part over there. So as you can see in my, my history browser over here, my browser, you'll see that I've got my link one and link two, and these are both I parts. You can see I've got different configurations, link 101, link 102, link 103, as well as my link two, I've got link 201, link 202, and link 203. Now to create the I assembly from this, uh, like as in the, the I part, you go to your manage tab, click on create I assembly. With this over here, you can see there I've got a couple different tabs that I can uh, configure. So the first one is my components, and with the components, you'll see the assembly over there, weldment assembly, plus as my normal parts, and in there, I can either include or exclude the parts, ground it, unground it, or make it adaptive or non-adaptive. Under my parameters, okay, I can also go and say, choose, for instance, you know, this mate one over here. What's the distance for this mate one? Maybe the first assembly configuration, the distance is zero, the second one, the distance is two, the, sec the third one, the distance you know, is 300 millimeters. Then under my properties, I can go change the properties for each one as well. You know, other project properties, oopsie. Uh, you don't want all of that. Okay, just to get rid of that, just go and select all of these and then just right click and delete column. It takes it back into the, over there. Okay, there's my projects over there. Uh, physical properties, material, as well as my custom properties over there. Under my exclusion, you can also exclude different, uh, different components as well. So you can either include or exclude them, and also relationships as well. So basically, you're suppressing the uh, the, the the relationship or the components. Any I mates that you've got, you can go put it in there. Go you know, configure your bill of materials for your bomb for each different I assembly uh, configuration you have, as well as then um, any other custom properties that you that you've put in over there. Okay. So now what we can do is we let's go and get, create this over here so let's go and oh, sorry, before i go just under the components over you'll see there even though i've got my link one which is an i part which has got different configurations of that part i don't have a way over here to configure that and the reason for that is that when i created this assembly i brought the part in as a normal part and then i created an i part out of it and um, so i've just got to what i'm going to do is just replace it with that I part. So I'm going to go cancel over here. And under my link one, I'm just going to do the link one. I can right click, go to component, and go to replace. Okay, so with that over there, I'm just going to go look for that link one. So there's my link one over here, and click on open. Okay, so there you can see I can also go and bring in, you know, the different, uh, the different configuration of it. So either link one, two, or three. I'm going to say that's fine. Okay, and it brings it in. Okay, so look, I've broken some of the um, the constraints over there. That's one of the uh, the problems with uh, replacing. I'm just going to suppress it for now for the you know for the exercise. Now let's go and create an I assembly. So go to create I assembly, and under my link one over here, you can see that I've got my table replace, and my link two. You can see I still don't have my table replace over there. Okay, so um, but we'll just see how we can configure this I assembly with this table one or the link one over here. So I'm going to put that in over there. And then I'm going to go create my different rows. So I'm going to go create three rows. Okay. And it's going to go, let's go small. Let's see. Small. Okay. Let's go medium and large. Okay. So there we go. Now, once I've done that, I'm happy with that. I just need to go and just replace those with the different iPod configurations that I've put over there. And OK. So now what it does, it's going to go and convert in the background. And you'll see there that it's, it's created an I assembly in the browser over there. It will give it table reference. So with that table reference over there, I've got small, medium, and large. So if I double click on medium, let's see what that does. Okay, so it should update that to the iPods configuration components that I created. There we go. So you can see there, that's gotten longer. And obviously, if I double click on that large one, it will go and change that. So that's how you can very, very quickly and easily create an iAssembly. And especially if you've got your iPods already created, it makes configuring an assembly very easy. Thanks very much for watching.